Chapter five is going to look very similar to the content that we covered in chapter four by way of how receptors are made. So the genetics is going to be a lot of the same. So that'll be good. But we are looking at a totally different type of cell. This time we're still in the lymphoid lineage and we're looking at the lymph lymphocytes, but we're going to be looking at T lymphocytes rather than B lymphocytes, or we tend to just call them T cells. And so when we talk about T cells, we're going to spend the, the majority of our time looking at the, um, let's see if I can get this, oh, the T cell receptor. So just like B cells, T cells have a receptor that can recognize and bind antigen. And these antigen binding spots are highly variable because they have to recognize potentially any antigen that the body would encounter. And so um, just like we saw with B cells, high diversity for antigen specificity, T cells are going to have that as well. But there's a whole nother level of what T cells can do because T cells have a much more diverse role. When we looked at B cell effector functions, essentially they could become plasma cells and make antibodies with that same antigen specificity. T cells, however, do a whole lot of other stuff, but it all begins with that T cell receptor recognizing antigen. And so we call the T cell receptor a TCR, um, typically, um, that is the abbreviation that is utilized. We're going to find, as we look at it, is going to have a similar structure to a B cell receptor by way that it has different chains and it has uh, antigen um, binding um, specificity at the tips, um, highly variable. Um, and we're also going to find that every individual T cell is going to have one specific, um, specificity for antigen. And so every T cell um, that then is progeny from that original T cell will end up having that same um, antigen specificity. And because we have so many different T cells and we have all this antigen specificity, we our T cells, the repertoire across the entire population, um, I mean, could recognize potentially any antigen that our body encounters. So let's just go ahead and take a look at um, the images here that I have on the slide. I hope I picked my video is not covering too much of the antibody, but you know, recall we have our our heavy chains that make up the antibody and then our light chains, right? And then within our light chains and our heavy chains, we have this variable region at the end terminus of the heavy chain. And then at the tip of that variable region, we have that antigen binding site, right? Where that highly variable um, set of amino acids is. Now, T cell receptor looks very similar in that there's going to be two chains, but instead of having a heavy and a light chain, we have an alpha chain and we have a beta chain. They're going to be about the same in weight, and so that's why we don't have a heavy and a light, but they will associate together just like what we saw with our heavy and light chains in, a, in an antibody. Um, and they're also going to have a variable region um, at the end terminus and a constant region down at the C terminus. Now, something that's different with a T cell receptor is it's never going to be um, secreted. It is going to be embedded into the lipid bilayer. So let's look at this um, um, slide here. Same picture, we just cut out the antibody um, image. And so we just have our T cell receptor here. So like I mentioned, it's always going to be bound. It's never secreted. And so every... T cell receptor has a transmembrane region along with the variable region at the top, the constant region, and then the transmembrane region. Um, so we call these chains T cell receptor or TCR alpha, TCR beta, they're two polypeptide chains. Um, again, each having a variable region and a constant region. The variable region is going to have um, higher variability in um, amino acid structure. Then we see with the constant region, there's going to be less variability there. Uh, just like when we looked at B cell, uh, receptor rearrangement or antibody um, 
chain, heavy and light chain rearrangement, we're going to see that same type of rearrangement in T cell receptors. So the genetics are going to be similar in that we have somatic recombination. And so still made by gene rearrangement. Um, again, every clone of T cells or like, so when we say clone, is any progeny that comes off of that one starter cell. So one T cell is going to start out by making this specificity to whatever uh, antigen, and then any cells that are replicated off of that, that's considered a clone, a T cell clone. And they're all going to have that same single antigen specificity. The antigen binding um, area is right where we would expect it to be, similar to the antibody. It's going to be where the alpha and the beta chains variable light or variable regions meet. Um, and then just like what we saw with uh, antibody or with B cell receptors, within that antigen binding site, there are hypervariable regions, our, our complementarity um, de um, determining regions one, two, and three. So those hypervariable loops that we saw. Okay, so very, very similar um, in structure, two chains, um, but this time we're at alpha beta. And we're going to see that there's a very similar gene rearrangement. So those um, enzymes that are active in B cells to go through somatic recombination are also active in T cells. And so the images are going to be very similar. Now, um, I want you to notice in this, I love this diagram. It's probably one of my favorite diagrams in, in the whole um, text. I'm trying to get this whole thing to go away. Oops, sorry, I wanna hide the um, controls. There we go, meeting controls are gone. <laughs> okay, um, so we have our alpha and our beta chains, both the, the DNA for those, um, those proteins, both on the same image. One starts at the top, oops. One starts at the top, one starts at the bottom. Okay, and then they work together uh, moving forward. So you can see like there's the arrow this way and then the arrow this way. So we're going to be moving towards the center of this diagram. Um, so the alpha chain uh, gene is going to be found on chromosome 14. The beta gene um, set of segments, they're found on chromosome 7. Okay. Not a big deal. That's just uh, for you to know um, that they're somatic uh, chromosomes. Okay, we have gene segments, just like what we saw with immunoglobulin. Um, for the constant regions, um, there's going to be two constant, re or there's constant alpha, constant beta. We don't really know any difference between the two. So the variable region is where the differences are really going to occur. And so when we look at the alpha chain, that's going to be more similar to the light chain in immunoglobulin because it's only going to have V and J segments. So here is our, our alpha chain um, up here at the top. And you can see that there's, there's V segments here and there's J segments. So our variable segments and our joining segments where our beta chain is going to be similar to the heavy chain in immunoglobulin because down here we have our beta chain and we have our, our V segments and we have our J segments, but we also have an extra set of diversity or D segments. And so we have our D to J rearrangement that occurs in the, in the beta chain and then the V to the D to the J. So very similar um, to what we saw where we're going to have in our alpha chain, we're going to have a segment randomly pulled out of the variable area uh, segments. Uh, we have, and there's like 70 to 80 different variable segments. So there's tons. Um, there's around 61 joining segments. And so one of those gets picked out and added together for so during somatic recombination. And then for the heavy or for the beta chain, we have our D and our J joined and then our V is brought in. And so that we end up with our variable segments brought together, and then they'll be brought in with a constant to end up making our alpha beta T cell receptor. This process of somatic recombination for T cells does not happen in the bone marrow. It will happen um, in the thymus.
So we saw with the B cells, and maybe I didn't even mention it, but in the B cells that happens in the bone marrow because that's where the B cell is developing, where T cells, as soon as they're at a very young age, age, uh, they will move into the thymus and then go through somatic recombination, which is handy because T cell um, and thymus both are T, right? Where, okay. So again, here is our image, and I probably kind of already talked through a lot of this, but um, we have in the alpha chain, we have the J and the V um, segments joined together that can then combine with a constant region. And then in the beta chain, we have the D and the J join, and then a V segment is brought in. And this is all done through somatic recombination. And because it's somatic recombination, Reg enzymes are involved. So the Reg complex, just like what we saw with B cells, is going to be active in T cells as well. And these Reg complexes um, create enzymes that will recognize these sequences in between to join onto, to bring in and splice. And so it's that, that, that recombination. Um, a functional alpha and beta chain then is going to consist of exons that have that leader peptide as well as a complete variable region and a constant region. And then also that membrane spanning region, this is coded for two on a set of genes um, that gets brought in for the actual mRNA transcript creation and then the translation. So we have um, the transcription then of of our alpha and our beta chains, and then they're translated into polypeptide chains. Those polypeptide chains are moved into the ER, and then in the endoplasmic reticulum, that's where the alpha and the beta chains are actually going to pair together and then be exported to the surface of the cell. So they're, they're transcribed and translated independently of each other, but joined together in the endoplasmic reticulum. So it might be great to be like, okay, well, I know what a T-cell receptor looks like. Well, not really. You know what the alpha and beta chains of a T-cell receptor look like. And actually to have a full T-cell receptor, there's going to be additional proteins that are, are brought in. And so, so far we have looked at the antigen recognition portion of the T-cell receptor. So our alpha and our beta chains, but a full T-cell receptor, um, is going to include other proteins because alone alpha and beta chains are not able to fully send signals down through the cytoplasm of the T cell. They are able to recognize antigen and that will then stimulate signal transduction. But these little cytoplasmic tails are just not enough to be able to send a signal all the way through. And so to have the full T cell receptor complex in place, that is what's needed to uh, fully transmit signals through the cytoplasm to end up getting the T cell to do things to tell cells what to tell other cells what to do. And so we have the CD3 complex. CD3 complex is actually going to be made up of three separate proteins. We have our gamma, our delta, and our epsilon proteins. And then so we have, and then our, our other big piece is the zeta chain. And so the zeta chain will extend much further down into the cytoplasm and then is utilized for signal transduction in conjunction with CD3. So to have the full T cell receptor complex is going to be the alpha and beta chains, the CD3 set of proteins and the zeta chain. And so it's those three things together when they're associated on the T cell um, membrane that will allow for single signal transduction once the antigen is recognized. Okay, that's not all the information there because we don't just have a T cell receptor that's alpha beta chains. There is actually another type of T cell receptor made up of two different chains called gamma delta. So gamma chain and delta chain are similar to the alpha beta chains in structure and the way that they are generated, but they're going to be slightly different in the way that they interact with the T cell once antigen is recognized. 
or even how they recognize antigen. So the T cell, um, the gamma chain is going to be similar to the alpha chain and that is only going to have the V and the J segments uh, and is found on chromosome seven. And then the um, delta chain is similar to the beta chain in that it has those additional joining se um, segments. So the V to the, or the D to the J first, and then the V comes in. And so delta, is, oh, sorry, delta is on chromosome seven, gamma is on chromosome 14. Oh yeah, so that's what I have there. Um, so yeah, you can see that the delta locus or the delta chain is going to have your J, D, N variable, where your gamma is just going to have your joining in your variable. So just to add another level, so let's compare the gamma delta T cell receptor alongside the alpha beta T cell receptor. Essentially, you can't tell the difference in structure. Um, they are going to be very, very similar in structure in that there is that variable region, there is that constant region, and then there's the hypervariable region where the antibody or where the antigen is recognized. But a T cell is either going to express a gamma delta T cell receptor or an alpha beta T cell receptor. They're not ever going to express both. And we'll look at how that happens later in the semester. But because it's a T cell is only going to express either or, we can kind of use that as a way to name T cells. And so we will use the name T cell to represent any T cell that has an alpha beta because alpha beta is much more mm, common and understood. And so, and the first one identified. So when we talk about an alpha beta T cell, we just call it a T cell. So alpha beta T cells is going to just equal T cell. But, to differentiate between an alpha beta T cell and the gamma delta T cell, if we call alpha beta T cells, we differentiate by calling um, gamma delta T cells, we call them gamma delta T cells. <laughs> so by default, when we just say T cell in your text from here on out, anytime they say the name T cell, they're referring to an alpha beta T cell. Okay. Now, we're going to end on this slide, but we're going to end with a thought here. Gamma delta T cells are much less diverse than alpha beta T cells. Alpha beta T cells have a very wide range of antigen specificity. Antigens are recognized by T cell receptors, but that's not it. There's more to it. MHC molecules. And then you're like, I don't know what an MHC molecule is. Don't worry, we're going to look at that. Um, MHC molecules are needed to also allow a T cell to recognize antigen. Okay, just hold on to that. Put it in your pocket. We'll come back to that. Gamma delta T cells are what we call MHC independent. They do not need MHC there. You're like, I don't even know. Whatever. Just put that in your other pocket. And um, we just know much more about alpha beta T cells. So that's going to be our default. Okay, that's where I want to stop. And we will get deeper into what I'm talking about when I say MHC in the next lecture.